Welcome to Electra Online. In order to solve an infinite series problem like this one, it can come in handy to use the technique of partial fractions. Well, first, let's see if we can kind of guess to see if this is going to converge. And this looks a lot like a P series. If you remove the minus 1 in the denominator, and notice as n becomes very large, the n squared minus 1 in the denominator is almost exactly the same as n squared. That looks a lot like the P series and the exponent is greater than 1, so we expect this to converge. Now, what will be the sum? Well, we can find out what the sum will be by writing the following thing. This can be equal to the infinite sum of 2 divided by, and if we factor the denominator, we get n plus 1 times n minus 1. And then this lends itself to writing it as two separate fractions, so this can be written as the sum of a divided by n plus 1 plus b divided by n minus 1. And then we use the technique of partial fractions to solve for a and b, and then we can sum up the two infinite series separately. So how do we do that? Well, we can say that 2 is going to be equal to, when we multiply a times n minus 1, plus when we multiply b times minus 1. But, oh, I should say b times n plus 1. What we're actually doing here is we're writing this over a common denominator of n plus 1 times n minus 1, which means that a times n minus 1 plus b times n plus 1 has to equal the numerator of that. Now we can solve this for a and b. Notice if we write this out, we can say that 2 is equal to a times n minus a plus b times n plus b. And from that, we can conclude that a plus b must equal 0, because there's no n counterpart on the left side of the equal sign. And we can say that minus a plus b is equal to 2. So that means that b is equal to minus a. And if I plug that in here, we have minus a minus a is equal to 2 or minus 2a is equal to 2, or a is equal to minus 1. Oh, I didn't write that right. Minus 1. There we go. So if a is equal to minus 1 and b is negative a, that means that b is equal to 1, which means that this can now be written as the infinite sum of a, which is minus 1, minus 1 over n plus 1, plus b, which is 1 over n minus 1. All right, so now we're going to sum those up separately. And so we're going to get the sum as n equals 2 to infinity of minus 1 divided by n plus 1. This is going to be equal to, starting with the first one, if n is equal to 2, we get minus 1 over 3, minus 1 over 4, minus 1 over 5, minus 1 over 6, and so forth. And then the second sum, we get from n equals 2 to infinity. Now we take the second one, which is 1 over n minus 1. That would be uh, 1 over n minus 1. Might as well write it out. So starting with n equals 2, we get 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5 plus and so forth. And now, let me put a line here so we don't get confused. So now, since we have to add those two together to get the total sum, notice that after we get to the one-third part, we have a one-third here and a minus one-third, a one-fourth and a minus one-fourth, a one-fifth and a minus one-fifth, meaning all these terms cancels out all those terms, which means the only two surviving terms that do not get canceled out are those two, which means that this sum, which is the sum of these two series, so the sum as n equals 2 to infinity, of 2 over n squared minus 1 can be written as 1 plus 1 half, which is 3 halves. And that is the sum of this result. Okay. And that is the result of this sum, infinite sum. And you can see, as we suspected, it did converge. And that's one technique that you can use to solve for an infinite sum like that. How's that? Pretty neat, huh?